Oh, welcome to part two of the October long weekend 2020 holiday that uh, we took. We headed out to the mid northwest New South Wales outback. So, in this episode, we're going from Barron Junction, we're going to bypass Walgett on the way up and into the Lightning Ridge, opal mining capital of Australia. So, this is the campground at the Barron Junction Artesian Bore Baths. We're leaving there and we're going to head up through Burren Junction. It's only about 500 metres up the road. Now, this day was about 33 to 35 degrees Celsius. A little bit of a breeze blowing. But, uh, beautiful views, beautiful clear day. So we're coming into Burren Junction. It's a little village 51 kilometres west of Weewar on the Camilleroy Highway on the road to Walgett. The name is from the local Aboriginal word for boomerang or big creek. Burren Junction grew from a railway encampment which became the extension of the Northwestern Rail Line in 1902. There you go, a little bit of a fact. It's got a massive population of 280 odd people. It's pretty big. <laughs> but, um, that was Burren. If you blinked, you just missed it, you might have to hit rewind and go back and watch it again. You know, the scenery out here is unreal. I absolutely love it. It's just dead flat. A few little rises here and there, but mainly dead flat. You've got the mallee, the fields of the wheat. And when they flower, it's just like an ocean of yellow. It is absolutely marvelous. The sunsets, second to none. The roads, not too bad. You see, there's a little bit bumpy, but uh, it's just a typical Aussie road. I've driven on worse ones around the streets in the suburbs. Nice and straight, as you can see. <laughs> Big statue coming into Lightning Ridge. That is amazing. It's the car bodies and stuff. Apparently his name's Stanley. Nice to see you, Stanley. Just coming into Lightning Ridge. So I've got these here. If you want to hit pause and you can read through them, it's a bit about the history of Stanley. He, he was huge. Um, just, just unreal to see out in the middle of essentially nowhere. But uh, what I did like to see was a little bit of the uh, indigenous history recognising a plaque alongside all the uh, history around. It talks about the Dinawa, the emu. You think for thousands of years people have lived out here in the heat, the dry, survived without a problem. This is one of the first sites you'll see the big concrete mixer welcoming you to Lightning Ridge. Alright, so we've arrived at Lightning Ridge. We're just going to go for a cruise through the town, pick out the main street. Let's have a look. The Lightning Ridge is a small outback town in northwestern New South Wales, Australia. It's just near the southern border of Queensland. So it's only six kilometres east of one of the uh, main highways, the Castle Road Highway. And as you can see, sealed roads. Look, it's quite easy to get there by road. It is a fair drive, so make sure you do your research on the kilometres. How many k's we did, I'll put at the end of this, on this trip. We've got a population of 2,290, 2,300. There are quite a few people around the town. As you can see, it's got everything you need. It's got the supermarkets, it's got the takeaway stores, it's got the service stations, accommodation. It's got all the tourist destinations you want to see when you come out to a place like this, obviously. Opal, where you can buy opals, either raw or polished or in jewellery. Just on the left hand side there is the sports club, the leagues club, bowling club. Um, it's one of those. <laughs> where we did stop and have lunch. Very nice meals, very good air conditioning, cold beer, and some awesome artwork up on the walls in that club there if you want to stop and have a look around and grab a bite to eat and enjoy a little bit of the cool air conditioning. We're 
going to head into this opal mine, which is just through the town, up the end of the street, and you come out to the walk-in mine. Honestly, this felt like stepping back into a Western movie. I was waiting for the cowboys and Indians. You know, flat out. The cowboys chasing the Indians, or the Indians chasing the cowboys, with arrows, and it's just unreal what, what my mind was doing out there. The beautiful scenery. So they do have souvenirs and stuff you can buy here from Lightning Ridge. And this is where you start to see the beautiful colours of the opal. One thing I learned, if you're going to buy opal, do your research before you buy. So we're going down a mine. The walk-in opal mine, just out of Lightning Ridge, on the northern side. And uh, yeah, let's go and have a look. This mine's no longer operational as a mine as such. And I found out they pulled over $30 million worth of opal out of this one mine. So we're going down, down, down. A long way. Biggest open lines open to the public. So we're at least 20 feet down. Old school timber choice. Wow. That's where the good stuff is. This is beautiful and cool down here. We're still going down. up all the loose stuff. I'm six foot tall and I've uh, got a heart at all. You eat it. Stuck in a little bit. Here and then it changes and the colour on the top. That's where the opal runs. See, they chip away at that fault to find the good stuff. Well, this miner didn't do too good. He's done. Oh, low bridge. I tell ya, you, you uh, wouldn't be any good as a miner if you're a tall fella. This is cool. Uh, I don't know, I can't relate, sorry. Yeah. Little spots like this. Another little pocket up there. That's where the oval is in those pockets. See so clearly here. George has had way too many. Oh, Emergency exit. Up the shaft.
All right, so we'll head back out. I've showed you enough. There is a lot more to this little uh, mine network system than what I've showed you. Obviously, if you want to see more, you've got to get there. But this is the uh, tops to one of those shafts, the emergency exits. It's still uh, like it was built back in the 60s and 70s. A lot of these wells and uh, there's warning signs everywhere about shafts. And well, I didn't know exactly how it was, but right next to me is a hole that was covered with a foot or two of tin. That was it. Um, a few of the locals were telling me a lot of these holes were never covered at all, so. So I found uh, the Lightning Ridge markets and uh, it was pretty cool. You get to meet some of the miners and locals and have a bit of a yarn on your way around. But I invested a little bit of money on some small chips. Uh, got a couple of these you can buy. Uh, pretty much they say they're no good for jewellery because they're too small or whatever. But uh, every now and then you find a little hidden gem. Like that red on black in the bottom. The black opal is there. This is the only place in the world you'll find the black opal at Lightning Ridge. <laughs> I believe I am actually really stoked that I've got a red on black, no matter how small. <laughs> if you start to buy, be warned, it's addictive. Now, if you're on Lightning Ridge and you see these doors, it's actually a car door tour. They number the doors and uh, you follow the arrows and have a tour of Lightning Ridge. Guided by yourself. So this is the Lightning Ridge Artesian Bore Bath. It's closed for an hour or two each day for maintenance and cleaning, but other than that, it's just another beautiful spot to stop and relax. Wash that dirt off. Cooper's Cottage. Cooper's Cottage is in the main street of Lightning Ridge and it's one of the earliest buildings from the pioneer mining days, built in 1916. It's one of the last ones left. Obviously you can see they built it with whatever they could get their hands on. They were the, the real true pioneers out there. Beautiful to look around and preserved. So we're heading back out of Lightning Ridge now. We've decided to bypass and go through Walgett check out and see what wall it's got to offer. Welcome you with a nice bridge, a little bit of water in the river every now and then you can have a dip in and cool off and then head into town. Walgett's a town in the northern New South Wales. It's uh, near the junctions of the Barwong and Namoy rivers and the Camilleroy and Castlereagh highways. It's got a population of around 2,200, so it's not too bad of a size. And um, what we didn't realise is we come through on a Sunday and this is one of those old school country sleepy Sunday towns work flat out five to six days a week that Sunday is the downtime as you can see it's got everything you need all the basics are still open on a Sunday but the majority of the place was closed but we still got to have a look around this beautiful town some of the old buildings and stuff through here the different designs that come from Queensland and New South Wales are sort of a mixy-matchy wishy-washy but beautiful historic style town and again sealed roads easy access plenty of accommodation and all the things you need you need to stop on your way through and uh, get all the things you need to keep traveling or if you want to stop there for a few days there's plenty to see use it as a base have a look around the town and check out all the beautiful sights outside of town
Alright, so we're out of Walgett, we're going to head back to Burren Junction, back to our base camp. On the way we just enjoyed those beautiful views to the left, the right, the front, everywhere. It is unbelievable. So we decided to check out Bowen Junction Hotel for dinner. And I've got to say, get there. Try the steak. The staff are great, the beer is cold. And they've even got dongers out the back for accommodation if, you, uh, if you're only in your car. Just passing through, decide to stay the night. And don't forget, 500 metres down the road, those beautiful baths. Actually, I'm going in. Oh, yes. No, there wasn't a lot to show in the morning. We got up, had breakfast, packed up. Time to hit the road and start heading for home. Once again, we're greeted with those beautiful flat views that you can see for miles and miles. We're coming to do a little town called Wee War, population of around 2,200. And again, like Walgett, this has got everything you need, all the shops, the takeaways, you want to go to the alcohol store, little IGAs, this beautiful pub, isn't that unreal? The architecture and the, uh, that country feel is still very much alive out in the West, and I love it. Actually been out here for a few years, a couple of years ago, I used to go cotton chipping. This is right next to uh, the Namoy River that does flow a lot of the time, and it's uh, surrounded by cotton fields. Some of the best quality cotton in the world comes from the ground around this area. But every afternoon from cotton chipping, You'd find me in the Namoy River, washing off the dust in the dirty river. <laughs> Ironic, but it felt good. The other thing I like about these little country towns like we were, no McDonald's, no KFC, none of that uh, crap. You want takeaway, you get real takeaway food with a real hamburger. Homemade chips. Bloody awesome. So now we're at Cotton Country and you can just see out in the distance the Great Dividing Range. And again, everywhere you go, it's just spectacular views. It is just magic out there. Trees start to get a bit thicker. It's unreal to see how the landscape changes the more you travel, especially moving east to west and west to east. And these little mountains start popping up. More trees, more greenery more mountains and just more beautiful things to look at through a beautiful little town called Bogabroy. Again, look at that beautiful pub. The old buildings are just unreal. We've got a population of just under a thousand people out here. 
a lot of roads bypass these little towns I suggest you call in at least drive through look at those beautiful structures and you can stop and get a milkshake a soft drink a cold beer a nice meal some accommodation everything you need just for a little five, five minute bypass all these major roads are going around these little towns now and it's slowly killing them off they're so beautiful how can you not go through them now this was random I'm going to call out the Australian Pyramids. In the middle of nowhere, this is this random little hill. <laughs> Those mountains are getting closer. So we're just going through a beautiful little town called Willow Tree. Nice shady little spot to cool down. Some Beautiful little cafes and stuff to have a coffee or a Devonshire tea. The population of around 350, 400 people, but don't let that size of the town get to you. The farmlands out here stretch for miles and miles. It is a beautiful little spot. Service station, coffee, tea, cold drinks. Awesome place to set your base or make sure you stop on your way through just for that refreshment to keep you going. those gum trees and everything get a lot bigger and a lot thicker and these mountains just go up and up and up slow down mate you too my big tank with a big camper takes me a little bit longer actually make sure you're patient on the roads when you see big fellas like me getting around taking our time it's not because we want to <laughs> the downhill run on the other hand which seems to be the best because the views when you're going downhill or unreal, it opens up that mountain range. The vast expanse of countryside out there that's just waiting for you to go and see. So what are you waiting for? Get out there and see it. It's all around you. It's right next door. We're just in Musselbrook. A little adventure home. As you can see, we passed through a couple of towns on the way. So we left the east coast about two hours north of Sydney. We shot northwest, made our way up to Barron Junction. From there, shot up to Lightning Ridge. You saw that. And um, yeah, we come back through Bogabri and a few other little towns that you saw. Just about, just about home. So, just want to say, make sure you get out, see your, see your own country. Forget about the planes. Get in your car and go for a drive and see what's out there. Somewhere you haven't been before. We've had an absolute blast. Helped out a few towns with a few dollars while we're out there along the way. Watch some beautiful sunsets. Met some awesome people, don't know who they are, probably never meet them again. But that's all part of the fun. And that's why we do it. So yeah, well, uh, not much more to say. I'm so relaxed. I'm not looking forward to getting back into the hustle and bustle of things, but uh, well, you know, until the next adventure, we'll see what tomorrow holds when I get there. <laughs> All right, see you later, people. Have fun. Take care. Say good day to a stranger. Hello. Right.